Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Uh, kind of just threw together a bit of an outfit, a uh, sriracha shirt, LA hat, uh, but it's also supposed to rain, I think. So yeah, that's why I needed a cover up and I got the hoodie on as well. In any case, as you can see in the corner, I am using the Galaxy S21 right now for this rear world camera test. It's gonna be the usual. I'm gonna head over to one of my botanical garden areas and just walk around and take some pictures of like ducks or something. But yeah, uh, I know a lot of you out there want to know what this particular phone, the uh, cheapest or rather the most affordable and the smallest of the bunch uh, is able to bring as far as cameras are concerned. So we're gonna do that today. Here we are at the LA Arboretum, one of my usual spots for this, and I'm just doing this clip to show off the fact that uh, the Pro Video Mode is also here on the Galaxy S21, which includes not only now the ability to use wide angle in Pro Video, but also you do the Bluetooth audio recording. Now, I do have a hood on, I don't know how the audio might change because of what I've got on right now, but I'm using the BT Mix Mode, which is supposed to mix the Bluetooth audio with audio from the phone. Uh, hopefully it'll sound a lot better than just the Bluetooth audio. And as per usual, make sure that you keep an eye in the corner so you know what camera I am using and where the audio is coming from. You might actually see a few clips from the Galaxy S21 Ultra as I did use it to film the Galaxy S21. Hopefully it doesn't get too confusing. One little caveat that I want to put out there real quick is that it was a super overcast day as I showed you, which means that the lighting situation wasn't broad daylight. It was more like medium, especially since this was later in the afternoon. So you're actually going to see, especially in the secondary lenses, what the medium light situations actually actually do to the quality of your capture. Now, if you're hanging out with me here on this video, I just want to thank you for kicking it with me. Don't forget that I also have a Galaxy S21 Ultra real world camera test, which obviously is going to have some of the other features that were added to the Ultra uh, that you're not going to get on the regular S21. Now, make sure you head over to the link that's appearing above and is also in the description below so you can watch that video as well. Uh, that one was pretty robust. After all, there's a lot to talk about with that phone. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you know when the rest of my Galaxy S21 and S21 Ultra coverage comes out. One thing I really enjoy about this camera system is that the main 12 megapixel sensor, the main one, has a really good autofocus. Even though this phone does not get the laser autofocus backing it up, it still does a pretty good job. You just have to make sure that you either tap your subject or have it in the middle as much as possible. The sensor also has a lot of natural depth of field. I mean, it makes sense because this has a lower aperture. Uh, so if you do want to get some of that soft background without having to rely on things like the portrait mode, you can just do it with the main sensor. Some of that does translate over to the three times optical zoom, which you can use in order to compress the background a little bit. You'll see some examples of that later, uh, but its depth of field is actually not quite as creamy as that on the main sensor, which again, makes sense. It has a slightly higher aperture. You ever see a sign like one of these and you think to yourself, if they had to put this up, it means it actually happened one time? I do want to make sure I give a few thoughts on the phone in general. I mean, if you're looking for an easy to handle experience on the daily, something you don't have to go to hand it on all the time, I mean, the S21 is the one for you. Uh, it's just refreshing to be able to use a phone like this that's so easy to carry, so easy to maneuver around, compared to even the S21 Ultra, which isn't too bad in its own right. And I will admit that 2020 is the year that got me used to big displays. But you know what, just to drive my point home a little bit more, a camera that is easier to handle is always going to be more appreciated than one that you have to fiddle with all the time. Now, you are going to be missing out on mainly the two telephoto lenses that are on the S21 Ultra. Also, the fact that you're not getting the 108 megapixel main sensor. Now, the thing is, I have to applaud some of the choices that Samsung made in this particular phone because they still want to have far-reaching zooms. And in order to do that, the zoom sensor on this phone is 64 megapixels. That actually makes a lot of sense to me because you get three times optical zoom, which is great, and then you can get more levels after that by cropping into the high megapixel sensor. 
Good on you, Samsung. The other two lenses are not going to be as high in the megapixel count, but hopefully they're going to provide still really good high quality results. Using the Galaxy S21 on this particular day really showed me just how much Samsung put into the Ultra. There are just some things that you're not getting here. Some of them are obvious, like no more dual telephoto lenses, so you're going to be stuck at three times optical zoom, which is fine, but once you go past that, you're obviously going to get more of like those oil painting photos. And then the ultra wide camera does not have autofocus uh, built in, which is kind of normal for ultra wides, but compared to the Ultra, that also means that this sensor is not capable of doubling up as a macro shooter. Here's a nice look at the director's view. Basically got a little bit of me here in the corner, but the main thing is that I can see the three lenses working in tandem so I can preview what I'm about to cut to, like that. And of course, the wide angle here. The only thing that's a bit of a bummer with the director's mode is uh, it's only going to record in 1080p resolution. Oh well. Hey ducks. Oh no, they're going away. Quack quack. My time with the Galaxy S21 for this camera test really did show me how the ranking works in Samsung's current lineup. The Ultra is definitely uh, deserving of that name, not only because of all the features and all of the extra lenses, the dual telephoto and all of that that it is able to have, but also because its quality actually is better than that of the S21. Now the Galaxy S21 is still going to be a good everyday camera smartphone, the kind that you can have in your pocket and if you want to have some quick uh, shots of things that are happening around you, you can rely on this phone to get it pretty well. But if I were to use the metric that I used on the Ultra of can I use this as a quick on-the-go b-roll machine, I would not use the Galaxy S21 for that purpose. That's a very niche thing, however, for content creators like myself, so if you are looking at the S21 as a more affordable flagship phone in the current Samsung Galaxy lineup, I think it's more than up to the task. After all, a ton of people out there probably won't need to go further than three times optical zoom, and the three times zoom actually looks quite good on this phone. Uh, so you can expect to get some nice zooms if you do want to compress the background or just get closer to your subjects. And then a lot of the features that Samsung really tries to market with their smartphone cameras are here as well, like uh, single take or the pro video mode. So you do have some choices if this is the phone or camera rather that you just happen to have on you. So clearly I'm taking a more casual look at the Galaxy S21, uh, but this is my real world camera test where I use the cameras in the context of what I am doing, a little bit like a vlog. And it's for that reason that you're not seeing many night shots here because I just am not shooting at nights, especially since I'm not out and about. I just come to these gardens and I walk around, have a little bit of fun, just chill out and shoot what is around me. My reviews on both of the Galaxy S21 that you saw in this video and the Galaxy S21 Ultra are on their way, should be coming pretty soon. Uh, I'm just working on my complaints and takeaways format for those so you know what things to look out for and what things to, let's say, celebrate with Samsung's latest Galaxy S line. Let me know what you think of the Galaxy S21 and its cameras in the comment sections down below, but also don't forget to check out my Galaxy S21 Ultra real world camera test, where I made sure to take a look at some of the marquee features that differentiate the Ultra from the rest of the lineup. Be part of the discussion in the comment sections down below, and if you liked this camera test, make sure you hit the like button as well. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to keep up with all of my Galaxy S21 coverage, and hit that bell over on the side so you know exactly when those come out. With all of that said though, I will call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea everybody.